Hello YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life and I do lots of thrifting, upcycling, repurposing, and DIY content. Today's video is jam-packed full of yard sale finds that I want to upcycle and we have lots of work and it's lots of inspiration here. So let's get started. I found three boat oars at a yard sale. It was the end of the day. The guy just wanted to get rid of them. He had three of them. He had $5 on them and he said he would give them to me for two bucks for all three. Brought them all home. This is how I'm gonna upcycle this one. I cut the end off of it because it was broken, scraping off any stickers that were on it. And then I'm gonna take my sander and sand it all down with an 80 grit sandpaper so it's nice and smooth. I've got it all prepped. I'm gonna seal it with this penetrating oil wood finish. I've got my gloves on and just an old rag and I'm going to put one coat over the whole ore. Now I'm putting this on at this step because I'm going to paint on top of it and I don't want the paint to stick really well. So by putting this oil on first, when I paint it, it's going to give it a chippy, rustic, kind of salt worn look. I let the penetrating oil sit for a few hours and now I'm masking off where I want my pattern. I want this to have a real nautical lake house feel. So it kind of looks worn out and it's been left out in the sun and well used. I had some different shades of blue in my stash. Some of it was chalk paint, some of it was acrylic. I'm just using it up. Now I'm going to put on some other stripes. So I'm taping over where I just painted so I can have alternating colors. Now, as you can see, when I'm pulling the tape off, because there was oil underneath, it created a resistance. And when I peeled it off, I had this really weathered look and I love it. I'm gonna put some hooks on the end of the oar and I'm just gonna mark them out exactly where I need them and then screw them in. So here is our oar before and here is what I created. I think this would look really beautiful at the cottage somewhere on the lake or by the river and you can hang it up at the door to keep your hats or your dog leashes or your sweaters. Love this upcycle. Really happy with the way that it turned out. Next project is this rusty old metal box. Love the look of it and I'm going to add some feet with some broken spindles that I had but I wanna do a transfer method that will work really well on this project using mailing sheets or CD labels. What we want is that shiny paper underneath. I've taken off all the labels and printed on the shiny side the graphic that I want for my project. These are CD label sheets that I picked up at the thrift store for a couple dollars and they work really well for this transfer method, but it will only work with your laser jet printer. It won't work with an inkjet printer. If I was to put the label on the rusty box just the way it was, you wouldn't be able to see the label very well. So I'm just dry brushing it with my white chalk paint just a little bit, just to give it a bit of color. So when we do apply the graphic, it will show through. Probably one of my favorite crafting DIYs is doing graphic transfers. You've seen me do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer lots of times, but I also love this transfer method because you don't have to rub off any paper. I'm using my polyacrylic sealer, while it's still wet, I'm going to lay that label sheet onto that polyacrylic sealer and then rub out any bubbles or wrinkles and we're just going to set it aside and let it dry and it leaves that right on your project. Now you can see sometimes it's not 100%. Some of the ink may stay on that sheet, but it usually works really well. I'm now gonna add some legs with some spindles that I had, measuring to make sure I have them centered exactly where I want them, pre-drilling everything and screwing them on. Here's our before and this is what I created. I absolutely love this graphic. I think it's perfect for this project and a really nice place to keep a plant or you could put it in the middle of a table for a centerpiece. If you haven't tried this graphic transfer method, give it a try. I found this old enamel bowl at a yard sale. Always pick up anything enamel and I already had this in my stash. I'm not quite sure what kind of wood it is, but it's gorgeous. I cleaned everything up as best I could, and we still had some rust left in the middle of that bowl, but I like the character of it. Now, this wooden piece, I'm unsure what kind of wood it is, but it has been handmade and hand turned. I am not gonna change either of these two or paint either of them. I'm just gonna incorporate them together. 
I'm going to use my E6000 and put a little bit on that piece of wood. And I'm also going to add a little bit of hot glue so we can keep it in place and it doesn't move around. Never had any problem with using these two glues together. I know some people say that it hasn't worked for them, but I'm still rolling with it because it works well. I'm going to attach them, make sure that it's centered, and then set it aside and make sure that it really bonds really well. So here's the before, and here is what I created. A really beautiful decor bowl for the center of your table for fruits and veggies. This was such an easy DIY that you can put together really fast, but it really creates a beautiful piece. I picked this face up at a yard sale and I think it was like 50 cents, but it has $29.99 on it. I am not a fan of the lime green. I know some of you really love it. It's not really my style, so I am going to give it a really pretty upcycle. I took it outside and I sprayed it with some primer, and now I'm going to paint it with my sand paint. I love using sand paint, and the texture that it creates is fantastic. I have a full tutorial on how to create sand paint. I'll put that link below in the description if you wanna make some of this for yourself. I love using sand paint when I wanna create a stone finish. I've put on one coat, let it dry completely, and now I'm putting on a second coat. And as you put on more coats, you're gonna have more of that stone look. I think the sand paint is really making the pattern pop on this face. This is two coats of the sand paint. I am absolutely loving it, but I just think it needs just a little bit more. I'm going to just dry brush just lightly a little bit of my white chalk paint on top of that pattern, and I think that finished it off beautifully. If you have old dated pots and vases, this is a great way to update them. So here's the before and here is the after. I absolutely love it. It's more my style now and I just cut these branches out of my garden and it looks gorgeous. <laughs> you enjoyed today's upcycles and I'd love to know down in the comments which one was your favorite. If you like this kind of content I'd love for you to like subscribe and follow along. And if you love this video I'm sure you'll love either of these next two and you can just click on one of those. Thanks for watching, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Take care!